Okay, I think uh, yeah. most of us are here. I just want to read from uh, Psalm 96, uh, the first few verses before we pray. Okay, Psalm 96, verse 1. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens, honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Uh, a wonderful uh, reminder to all of us um, to sing uh, his praise, to declare uh, the good news, proclaim the good news, declare his glory um, among all the nations. Right? Um, so that is the responsibility of every believer. That is a privilege of every believer. And uh, each one of us, we are called to this. We are um, uh, empowered, anointed to do this. Um, so let's uh, let's just pray that the Lord would uh, you know uh, enable us. The Lord would uh, 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 strengthen us, anoint us afresh uh, to be able to do this. Right. So uh, let's let's pray. Father, we we just want to thank you, Lord, that uh, you've created each one of us. Lord, you've redeemed each one of us, Lord, for this special privilege. Lord, to sing to you and to proclaim to the nations, Father God, and to declare your glory, who you are, what you do, Lord, among the peoples, Father God. And uh, Master, we thank you that you've called us as kings and priests. Lord, you've called us, Lord, as your own special people, as a chosen generation, Lord, to be able to do this, God. And Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We ask that you would, uh, you would fill us with your spirit, Lord, that you would, uh, um, Lord, give us a fresh understanding, Lord, uh, and, and also that you would give us um, a fresh impartation and a revelation, Lord, uh, of um, our privilege and our, our responsibility in this, God. Wherever we are, in whatever realm of uh, under um, the sphere of influence, Lord, you've placed us in, in whatever environment you have placed us in, Lord, enable us to do this, God. Enable us to sing your praise. Enable us to proclaim your glory and who you are, Lord, and proclaim your praise to the people, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay, so uh, we continue with um, marriage and family. And um, we let's just continue from where we stopped last class. Uh, so last class, we were looking at um, some important um, aspects of marriage, which means, uh, 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 you know, beginning the uh, marriage or even before we commit to marriage, um, or, uh, you know, wedding and marriage. So how one has to prepare oneself, right? And we looked at several areas of uh, preparation, okay, which is uh, sometimes, uh, you know, like we said, we get very excited about the wedding. And preparing for the wedding, uh, which in itself is, I mean, it's its not bad. One has to prepare this a lot of things. It's a special day and so on. But also to understand that it's, um, uh, it's a lifetime. Right? Wedding is an event and marriage is a journey. And uh, it's a lifelong journey. So it's good if one is prepared, like personally. So we looked at several areas, right? Uh, we looked at how we can focus on becoming or we need to focus on becoming um, the best version of ourselves, right? Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 we started by looking at that, and then we looked at how we need to look at our emotional health, okay? see uh, what is our uh, you know our attitude, our motive, our behaviors, our thought patterns, um, you know our and we looked at several things. We looked at um, you know, our attitudes, we looked at, uh, are we negative and pessimistic? Are we burdened with guilt and shame? And because all this is going to affect our relationship, right, uh, with our spouse. So we looked at emotional health, and then we also looked at how we need to manage ourselves personally. And we looked, you know, our work, our ministry, our career, finances, uh, how we manage our time, 
uh, and uh, how we manage the household right we cannot be totally uh, detached from a household no matter you know how anointed we are in ministry or you know how skilled we are in our workplace or how successful we are you know uh, how our household skills and how our responsibilities towards the household so we we looked at that and we also looked at relationship skills right uh, our ability to communicate right if you if you you know if you want to express something and you're feeling inhibited to express that or if you're feeling uh, you know you're unable to communicate that um, then there's a that's a challenge right that's a challenge that needs to be worked on and overcome uh, in order to have a good marriage so communication skills roles in marriage relationship with in-laws um, because you realize that um, yeah you're just not you know it, it's it's not marriage in isolation it's with the extended family in the sense um, the extended the family of the, uh, the groom the family of the bride everyone is uh, you know involved in this is also part of the family and so there is definitely uh, interactions uh, there's going to be um, you know uh, there's going to be times when they are involved in certain things in in life and and so how do we interact how do we respond to all that because um, they are family you know and they are important to your spouse and uh, and so also your family is important to you and so how do we deal how do we uh, interact with uh, you know each each other's extended family that is also important so so we looked at that okay so then we looked at uh, overcoming the past uh, which means abuse or trauma or negative experiences um, you know maybe some kind of addictions and what kind of environment we grew up in um, which could be influencing us in a very big way uh in a, in a big way when i say big way i'm saying you know it could be in a in a negative way um so if there's a negative influence because of how we grew up and how we um you know because of our env environment then we need to obviously break free from that and uh, we also need to work on that right then we looked at sexual purity uh, i think this is where we um, we we ended last class right where marriage is 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 something that's honorable and sacred uh in the eyes of god right and uh, you know he's the one who designed this whole aspect of sex in physical relationship and it is to be sexual intimacy it is to be between the husband and the wife in the context of marriage so if there's anything else that is going on in life uh you know in 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 a person like if there are addiction to you know maybe pornography and uh, and masturbation and uh, uh, and if somebody's uh, you know just um, uh, so addicted to looking at sexually ex explicit movies and so on uh, i need to break free from that i need to get help to break free from that and i not say okay marriage will fix it right marriage will not fix it marriage is just expose that and all those things will you know come to the surface right um, so um so the the importance of uh, of living a sexually pure life right then also the other thing is also true in the sense that to be able to express oneself in the context of marriage to be able to uh, you know not have any fears about physical intimacy about sexual intimacy right so maybe because of the past maybe because of something something traumatic which happened well if uh, one is saying that i i don't want you know physical intimacy in marriage then that then there's a problem right because god has designed marriage to be that way so um in such cases also one needs to prepare in the sense get help maybe get counsel uh, and uh, and overcome those things right okay so that's where we stop so today uh, we'll continue um this is um in your notes we're looking at chapter what chapter is it uh, i think preparing for marriage right Ch chapter 2 and we're looking at the seventh topic which is christian maturity calling and ministry okay so christian maturity calling and ministry right so um in ephesians 4 we see that uh, each one of us uh, uh like the lord has placed the fivefold ministry in the church in order to build up the church which means uh, the church meaning the body of believers so that each one of us will come to the fullness of uh, understanding christ will come to the maturity 
uh, of, uh, 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 let me just read that verse, right? Verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Uh, verse 13, this is Ephesians 4, verse 13, for till we all come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the mature of the mature stature of the fullness of Christ, um, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. So what is God's desire? God's desire is that the body of Christ come to a place of maturity. And the body of Christ is like you and I. We are all believers in the body of Christ. Uh, we are all part of the spiritual body of Christ. So. Uh, God's will and God's desire is that every believer come to a place of maturity. Every believer come to a place of understanding. Um, not being children, being tossed to and fro in every by every wind of doctrine, but to come to a place of serving, to come to a place of, uh, you know, uh, to the work of ministry, to do the work of ministry. Now, let's say in marriage also, um, so we need to have a, a plan and understanding that Okay, this is how I was. This is how I was growing spiritually um, uh, when I'm when I'm single. Now, how do I continue to do that when I'm married? Okay, uh, the thing is this because uh, there is definitely there are additional responsibilities in marriage where you're looking after the home, and then maybe when children come, you know, additional responsibilities of parenting uh, and all that. So, uh, just need to think, you know, how will I uh, continue? How can I ensure that I continue to grow spiritually, you know, along with my spouse, right? And how can we help each other? Maybe, you know, uh, it, it's ideal if uh, it, it, it'll be great if both are in the same level of spiritual maturity and spiritual hunger and 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 growing in and uh, you know in Christ likeness. But if not, you know, how can we help one another? Okay, so um, to think about that uh, and to prepare oneself for that. Okay, so what about what about God's call, right? Uh, maybe um, God has called you for a specific role and function. Um, so maybe as God God has called your spouse for a specific role and function uh, in the body of Christ. So how can we help one another, right? How can you help one another? Uh, you know, do you understand? Uh, God's call for your spouse to be or, or a spouse, right? Have you even talked about it, right? Because, um, uh, because one can be very, uh, get very frustrated spiritually saying, okay, hey, uh, you know, this is what I feel God's call is. You know, I've, I've heard people say, um, you know, if only I didn't get married, I would have been, you know, doing great things in the ministry. You know, if I didn't get, get married, I was, I was, I would have been, you know, doing this and that and the other. But the fact is this: that God, who designed, uh, you know, God who called us for ministry, is, is the one who designed marriage, and He's the one who placed us in families, right? So it's a, uh, uh, it's the same God. He's the same. Uh, so which means that marriage is important in in God's eyes. Family is important in God's eyes. So we can't say. If I was not married, then I, you know, I'll be doing great things for God. Uh, I've been hindered by, you know, we hear all these things, right? I mean, I've been really greatly this thing, not been encouraged by my spouse, been you know, held with help. Probably it's true. So there, therefore, the importance of, you know, preparing oneself for that, and even talking about it, and planning about it. You know, when we plan for the wedding, you know, there's a lot of things that we talk about. So. Uh, why not this, right? As believers, as believing, as a believing couple, uh, we're planning to get married. You know, talk about that. Hey, what is, what is God calling you to be, uh, and what has God called you to do, and uh, and see. You know, we're going to look at compatibility in our next chapter, um, and uh, is this is one of the things which is very very important. Okay, and uh, and also and also to see that okay, if um, you know together. Uh, what can we do uh, together to further God's kingdom? Uh, is there something that God is calling us to do together as a couple? So, you know, think about that, prepare oneself for that, right? So we looked at seven areas, seven like broad areas where one can prepare oneself um, before marriage, okay? So for those of us, again, you know, those of us who are married, 
Well, these are areas to grow in. Right? Uh, maybe uh, maybe we we look at some of these areas and we see that you know there's there's a problem here. There's a problem here, or maybe we are strong in this particular area, but then they're sadly lacking in this because we never address it. We never talk about it, and uh, I've never personally you know looked at it this way. Well, it's a, it's an eye opener and it's a call. Uh, you know, it's an it's a it's an invitation for us to grow in these areas and to change in these areas right okay so um you know uh, you know the if, if you see in your notes you will see that uh, some very practical things that are given there and uh, this is what we uh, we go through i mean as in we take couples who are preparing for marriage uh, we we recommend this for them that they need to spend time studying god's word working through these lessons uh, you know have open discussions uh, etc so it's uh, it's uh, designed for that right um, so you can just go through i'm sure you'll find it uh, helpful okay okay um let's move on to um, yeah so I'm, I'm just going to leave all that for self uh, reading you can just go through the application area um and also the some of these action items that you can go i'm just going to leave that so that you can go through right um okay just give me a minute please okay okay Okay. Any um, any questions or anything that you uh, you might want to share, um, you could you could do that. Uh, anything at all that um, um, in 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 these uh, areas that we looked at. Any any questions? Any doubts? Um, okay. Uh, Pastor, I have a small doubt. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead, John. Pastor, we uh, spoke about emotional issues in the past, uh, not to be getting carried into the marriage, right? So, um, yeah. what if we uh, find an elderly couple, elderly in a sense, uh, 60 plus both of them? And okay. uh, they still have that issue, uh, maybe rejection mm. in the past, which is carried into the marriage, yeah, causing uh, 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 outburst of uh, wrath and things like that happen uh, in a in a really bad way. Yeah. So um, how can we? Mm. Yeah. So so that's a very possible scenario. No, not only for like elderly couples and it could also be for you know any age group um and like they've done life together for maybe you know whatever 20 years 30 years and then uh, you find that there are certain areas which have not been addressed and because of which you know there is still uh you know they maybe they get at each get back at each other uh, they get angry uh, and then say okay you never do this or you you are always been like this and you know all, all those kinds of complex uh, things so yeah so the, the 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 best way to address that is of course um, like if uh, you know one one thing is if if they know that they are lacking in that area and if uh, if they feel that okay we need help uh, hey, you know after all these things you know we still uh, it, it doesn't look good, you know, as believers, and then uh, they, they feel that they need help. Then we can direct them for help, you know, for uh, to a good uh, Christian counselor who can help them address that, who can help them uh, help walk them through, you know, all that uh, the path of recovery, uh, receive emotional healing, and um, and then you know uh, address this that very main main thing uh, replace basically you know maybe they're just holding on to certain lies uh, and uh, let allow god's truth to replace those lies and they immediately they will experience uh, you know freedom or the person will experience freedom and uh, yeah so that that is one option um uh, definitely to do that um uh, and also maybe have uh, like a marriage enrichment um a seminar from time to time or direct them to that uh, that will also be a, a great refreshing time um, you know where 
uh, we can they can celebrate those good things that have happened. You know, that's also important. And look at this one area which is causing them a lot of problem and embarrassment, and uh, and address that and say, okay, it's it's not too late to change, because there's a lot of hope. You know, when we look at scripture, when you look at uh, life examples, and we get inspired, say, okay, you know, this has happened to this couple, and you know, why not in our lives? Uh, we can change. So that would be the way to go about. Um, but I think um, like from what you're saying, you know, maybe you know, the, the, what would add to the complexity is like maybe uh, you know, there, there's a lot of tradition, you know, there's a lot of um, stigma. Uh, if it's you know this age group that you're talking about, and maybe they're not so open to getting help, and talking about marriage, um, so that would be the first thing I think, you know, to yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. So because if that's not you know if, if they're if they are in in that age bracket, then obviously they've seen a lot of things, and uh, and maybe they come from a you know that era where it's not okay to really talk openly about marriage. There's a lot of stigma, uh, shame and all that. So so maybe to give them that assurance that it's okay. You know, it's 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 just getting help. It's uh, it's fine to talk about it. And, uh, you know, as a pastor, you know, to give that confidence, I think, and also that confidentiality that, uh, uh, so that, uh, I think that, yeah, that's the thing, for, uh, John. First step. Yeah, so uh, just one more, uh, just to add to that question. Yeah. Um, the, they, this couple had been in ministry for a long time, mm. and um, they are still in ministry. So there is also that uh, aversion from, you know, uh, it's kind of a uh, belittling themselves. You know, they feel like you know, it's mm. uh, too embarrassing for them to get help also. Yeah. Uh, or uh, they're not willing to talk. Or counseling or any of that matter so mm. uh, any gradual way <laughs> which we can uh... mm. yeah so so the thing is they need to have the confidence in in the person now this is also adds to it you no know, like if they have been in ministry if they are pastors you know um obviously it has to be you know done with a lot of uh, you know care uh, i mean this whole process so from their side also, they are very, very hesitant, you know, like whom can we trust? Um, so far, we've been like examples and leading the, you know, uh, we've, we've been the one who's been who's been giving instructions, but how, whom can we trust? So it makes it even more complex, but um, yeah, but uh, maybe to lead them to someone who whom they look up to, you know, uh, maybe some ministry couple whom, you know, so that's why, it's important to have that fellowship. Uh, that would always help. Um, yeah, but but yes, gra yeah, gradual way is to just expose them to the truth. I think, you know, if there's a for forum where, let's say, let's say even a marriage enrichment weekend or a marriage enrichment uh, time, where we're talking about all these things and we are, uh, you know, we just it, and it's a it's, it's a gradual step. You know, we're talking about okay, marriage. We're talking this is God's plan. Uh, and and maybe that you could have couples sharing, you know, young couples, old couples sharing. Hey, this is uh, these are some struggles that we go through, you know. And it's a it's it it won't happen on day one. It might happen after a few months, where uh, a few months of meeting, of exploring God's word, looking at God's truth, allowing God's truth to change, and then saying, okay, we we had this challenge, we overcame, or we still have this challenge. Um, so that I think that would be a step in the direction. I think that helped. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Right. Okay. So let's um, let's uh, move on to the next chapter. Um, like I don't have the PowerPoint. I hope you you know you got the notes open. Um, so we can look at um, chapter three. So chapter three is uh, is primarily you know directed to those who are considering marriage, right? Uh, which is uh, uh, so that's the that's the tone of that of this entire chapter. But for those of us who are already married, okay, so it's not uh, it's not an encouragement to say, okay, I, I didn't do this, I made a mistake in this area, so therefore 
you know uh, i need to come out of it so that's not the intention it's the intention is okay now what can i do you know what can i do to better it what can i do to strengthen this area or maybe uh, well i didn't i didn't look at it look at marriage this way i didn't even consider these you know possibilities uh, but you know despite all that you know how can i continue to honor the covenant and how can i uh, strengthen you know myself and my spouse in these areas so that uh, you know we can we can uh, we, we can enrich or improve our marriage okay so that's the um, that's how p- people who are married should look at this whole uh, chapter okay so let's look at uh, you know uh, chapter 3 so we're looking at compatibility in the sense uh, well when we consider an, a person so far we were looking at what we can do to work our work on ourselves right so now if we are you know considering someone uh, as a um, where as a life partner and you are looking at um, uh, you're considering several options right uh, and looking at certain characteristics and you want to see certain things in them and so so what are certain areas to look at okay so it's not just that hey uh, this person is very funny this person is very you know or handsome or beautiful and has these uh, abilities and you know skills and talents and uh, I like to spend time with them so I'd like to spend the rest of my life with them no <laughs> you know that's a, that's a very um, I don't know very superficial way of looking at it right so here are some things right to look at um, well we can look at four areas okay four broad areas of compatibility okay so um, just want to share some scriptures here if you look at Amos 3 and verse 3 okay um, Amos 3 and verse 3, well, it's not in the context of marriage, but really it says, you know, can two walk together unless they are in agreement, okay. unless they are agreed. So, um, um, it's, uh, I'll just read that verse out. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? And the Good News Bible says, puts it, or the Message Bible puts it this way. Can, do two people walk hand in hand if they are, if you are not going to the same place? So it means that, you know, you, marriage is a covenant. You're saying, okay, we are you're agreeing to walk to walk together. So, despite all differences, okay, we might uh, have a lot of differences, and these differences actually attract us to the other person. You know, I'm a very serious person, but the other person is very funny, or I'm a quiet person, the other person is very talkative, and I see that, oh, hey, this this person is very different from me, and then you know, you 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 feel drawn to that person, right? Um, but the thing is, we need to look at other areas where you are agreeing upon. You know, we're looking at things the same way. And it's not uniformity, but even with our differences in personalities, even with our differences in likes and dislikes, etc., we are agreeing to say, okay, despite the differences, uh, we can agree on this. Uh, this is what we can agree on it. Um, so it's a place of agreement. It's an ability to be at a place of agreement, um, to be yoked together, right? It's a covenant because you're yoked together, right? So, so we will not be an exact copy of the other person. No, it's very, it's uh, we, we we will not be, but to come to a place of understanding, um, we see the differences, we celebrate the differences, we see the common things, we see those things that are you know the common ground, and we say, okay, let's you know, we are, we are going to walk together. I see the differences, but we are agreeing to walk together. Okay, um, so when it comes to compatibility, okay, the first area uh, that we can uh, look at is spiritual compatibility. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Okay, first of all, we are uh, we are actually laying the foundation that we need to be making this marriage covenant to a believer. Yeah, I think we addressed that in the earlier sessions, earlier classes. Right? Uh, we cannot be unequally yoked with someone who does not believe. When you say who does not believe that, um, yeah, so Sid Keno says, people say that opposites attract. Yeah, very true. Uh, but in life, <laughs> you know, <laughs> after making the covenant, opposites also, you know, there's a lot of uh, fire and uh, explosions and, you know, uh, whatnot because of the, you know, because of the differences, like sharp differences, you know, 
why are you like this? Why are you so different? Why can't you be like me? That also happens. That never happens during the courtship, right? That happens only after, you know, after you make the covenant and you and you spend some time. And you're like, why are you like this? You know, why why do you always, you know, why 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 is your this thing always messy? Uh, why can't you be orderly like me? Or you know, things like that. So. So, so the uh, first area of compatibility is spiritual compatibility. So when we say spiritual compatibility, we're saying that, okay, one common ground is both are believers, right? Both the, 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 the uh, you know, the person whom we are considering has to be a believer. And that's a very, very important aspect. Okay. So otherwise there's going to be, you know, we, we could say, okay, that person is a very nice person, kind person, very patient person, very noble person. Um, but, we are going to be pulling in different directions. Either, you know, uh, you, you are going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be differences, right? Um, so, the, so that's that's a given. Now, the, what is the given? What is the understanding that both have to be believers? Okay. Now, uh, even when both are believers, when we say spiritual compatibility, to to see, you know, do does that person have a similar commitment? To Christ, okay. So that's important. Similar commitment, similar passion, you know, similar discipline. Okay, these things. Does a person have that? Okay. For example, you know, uh, yes, both are believers. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So both say, okay, I'm committed. You know, I'm a born again believer. I received Christ as my Lord and Savior. But if one person is saying, okay, no, I. I'm really passionate about Christ. I want to spend time in prayer and worship, and uh, you know I want to serve uh, in the church where I'm at uh, locally. Uh, I want to be you know involved in ministry. And the other person is saying, hey, hey, you know, it's just one part of my life. I have several other things to do, and uh, for me, my commitment is okay. I'm I'm in church on Sunday. That's it. Oh yeah, I read the Bible, I pray, but I don't want to go beyond that. Okay, so. So there also there's there's incompatibility, okay. So I'm not saying that the marriage will not work, but there is you know uh, th there are these differences and it, it's going to create some conflict, right? So the uh, you know the wife will say you know why 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 are you so this thing why are you spending time in church all the time? Or the husband will say why are you why do you want to do this? You know I, I don't want to serve I don't want to do this thing I, I want to relax on a Sunday. Right? Why are you? Why do you want to do this? Right? So you see all these differences cropping up, and uh, so so spiritual compatibility. Right. So uh, the thing is that um, the these differences can be very sharp, uh, and then cause uh, distance, you know, between the couple. Okay? Now, for those of us who are married, okay, you say, okay, hey, that's that's my situation, right? Uh, my spouse does not understand the intensity of. Uh, fervor or passion that I have for the Lord. Uh, you know, I, I'm here in Bible college and I'm doing this. And But whereas my spouse, yeah, she's a good person. He's a good person, uh, believes, but doesn't have the same uh, you know, passion. Okay, so what do we do? We, of course, we pray. We don't preach at them. You know, the mistake people do is, uh, okay, let me just preach. You know, this is what you need to do. This is, you need to do this. You need to do that. And the, and the person is going further and further away saying, I, I no, please don't force me. Please don't pressurize me. Okay. So the thing is to really um, be an example first of all, right? Be an example, uh, and uh, and and also pray. Be an example. Uh, share what God is doing in your life, and slowly, you know, let open the heart. Uh, so let, let, let the other person uh, be drawn to Christ, or drawn more to Christ. You know, uh, into um, and and let allow the Holy Spirit to work on their hearts. Okay, so so this is something that we need to. It could it's a journey again. Uh, I'm talking to, of course, we're talking about uh, couples who are, you know, people who are already in a marriage, and you know, you see that there is spiritual incompatibility. Incompat okay, okay. So what is the second area? The second area is emotional compatibility or intellectual compatibility. Okay. Um. So here also, you know, this. Uh, there, there can be, you know, uh, uh, there can be uh, this potential for in, incompat incompatibility in the sense, okay, what is that other person interested in? Okay, now 
No, don't get me wrong. You know, sometimes like it's like okay, maybe you are interested in music, the other person is not. Uh, they are interested in something else. Okay, so the areas of interest are different. Okay, um, but is there a mutual understanding and respect intellectually? You know, you're able to express something, and the person is able to understand that. Okay, so when it comes to multi uh, or you know uh, like a multicultural multi uh say ethnic or racial you know marriages you know th this is a very important aspect right uh, because uh, the language is also very important so the language you use to like, you know communicate and the person understanding you and understanding um, your language or is is that a very difficult thing they're not able to express themselves right or um, they're not able to express themselves in a manner uh, that they want to be understood, right? Um, so that's uh, there's incompatibility this way. So emotional incompatibility happens. Um, so so it's again, it's a journey. Um, so we need to make that journey. So are there things, common areas of interest, you know, that you talk about that you can uh, you can relate to? And so what happens is, you know, during uh, you know. Uh, during courtship, the other person just makes an attempt, okay, or or tries to be interested, or just forces themselves and says, "Oh, yeah, 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 yeah," and then listens to every conversation, and it's like, "Wow, I'm just holding on to, hanging on to every word," and then it's like, you know, totally different, right? After marriage, and then um, you see that, okay, I, I'm actually not interested in this. Please don't bother me with this. Uh, I find that boring, even. And, and then you know there is no there's there's no common ground, right? Um, so is there any activity that you can you know you can say okay I can do this together, like uh, you know let's say you can uh, you know you 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 both of you like to read or both of you like to watch you know certain kinds of uh, films maybe you know documentaries or whatever even movies you know there's some common ground. Okay, um, so that's that's very important to find out. That's very important to see that. Okay, I'm, I'm able to connect with this person. Okay, um, so that's important. Okay. Um, okay, for, for those of us who are, who are married, again, this is something. This is an effort that we can probably make, that we can take in order to understand. In order to, we may not have the same interests. Or the same level of interest in certain areas, certain activities, uh, but we can make an attempt. We can make an effort. Okay, like for uh, for example, me and my wife, because um, I listen to music and uh, you know uh, all that, and uh, my wife is interested in gardening. Like she like she likes plants. For me, gardening is like I like trees. I like uh, you know like macro level nature. <laughs> um, uh, but so when I look at uh, some leaves, you know, I'm not like very excited, <laughs> you know, the way she is. Like she likes to gift plants to people and, and all that. So so I slowly I'm trying to understand. Okay. Um, okay, I'm trying to understand. Oh, understand. Okay, there are different kinds of plants. <laughs> These leaves leaves are shaped differently. Okay. These they they have different names. Okay. So those kind of you know, I'm just trying to learn and and also see okay uh, maybe I can if I gift a plant maybe she'll get she'll be happy, so so doing that right. Uh, so we, uh, I always knew that you know the family and she she was interested in gardening, but uh, like over a period of time I realized that she's really 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 loves plants um, and etc. In fact, uh, sometimes in our homes, these plants get a wash. So I'm, I'm just opening the washroom and it's full of plants. They're all getting their bath, you know, <laughs> and there's no space for me, right? So so that also happens. So, yeah, so the thing is, you know, you have common ground. Of course, both of us, you know, when it comes to food, we like, uh, we like food and, uh, you know, we like eating out. We like spicy food, extremely spicy food. So we have all that. So we compare notes. We talk about that. We like watching certain, you know, programs together. So we do that. So, uh, so these are things, right? So, so as married people, you know, if you find that okay, there's an area of compatibility, uh, incompatibility, or, or differences. I won't say, you know, even say incompatible differences. You know, these are areas to grow in. 
make an attempt find out uh, get interested maybe 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 you're not passionate about it but these are something you can learn all right and uh, and it can be a common ground and it can be a it can be a thing you can be a learner you can ask uh, you know uh, and then uh, it can be a common ground it can be a common point of conversation right and you getting to know understand uh, and so on okay so second one emotional and intellectual compatibility third one is physical compatibility hey the lord has designed us in a way to be attracted to each other physically right so um, you know there's nothing wrong in that right when you're considering a person uh, for marriage and you've prayed and asked and all that so there's nothing wrong in being physically attracted to that person okay so appreciating uh, uh, the other person's beauty uh, physical beauty um, there's uh, there's uh, nothing wrong in that so uh, so physically you know if you if you're saying that okay i uh, i don't i'm not even going to consider that area then uh, we're not being really truthful to ourselves right um, so that's another area of compatibility if you're saying um, you know uh, uh, saying that okay uh, that's an area which is uh, which is important as well okay. so that is not the only thing but that is one of the things one of the areas uh, one has to look at compatibility also and be truthful to oneself right okay um, then the fourth area is compatibility in life's calling okay so um, this, this is a very, this is a big big one right life's calling and it can and it can create a lot of tension it can create a lot of conflicts uh, if you've not really considered this right so let's say uh, one one of let's say the uh, husband is um, uh, you know uh, feels that he's he's called to be uh, in in a city in an urban setting as a working professional you know good believer uh, but he feels that he's called to that you know that particular uh, area you know, urban setting professional working professional and wants to serve God, whereas the wife uh, or, or the wife to be feels that uh, well, I, I feel that I'm called to, you know, to these villages. You know, I'm called to you know, really minister there, called to be there even, and uh, and uh, maybe uh, you know uplift some of those things, break social taboos, and I, I'm called to bring in change there, right? And and these two people are considering marriage. Now this is an this is a very important area to to talk about and say okay, I feel this is what God has called me to do. So you know sometimes the uh, if you're not being honest and truthful, you might say okay maybe maybe that will change. You know the let's say, let's say the husband I mean the uh, the the guy feels that. Uh, yeah, I know she feels this way, but then once she gets married to me and then we live in the city, maybe she'll change. Okay. I mean, that's a big, big gamble, right? Or maybe the girl feels that, okay, I know that he's a city, the thing, but then, you know, once he, once he gets to know, the, uh, I mean, once, once, he, uh, once, once, we, uh, once we are married and then I, I, I talk about this and once he sees those, uh, you know, uh, my work and ministry and my heart for ministry and maybe he'll change and he'll come. Right? That's again a big, big uh, if that is there, you know, if that happens. Uh, then it'll be good. But then, let's say it doesn't happen at all, right? Both of them are stuck in and they, what they know, you know. And that is this is God's call for them. So, uh, but then if it's going to be uh, uh, every day, you know, they're going to be one of one of them is going to be wilting, right? One of them is okay. Is in their area where God has called them to be and they feel that okay they can do great things and they are thriving whereas the other person feels limited feels withheld uh, from whatever uh, God has called them you know feels that you know I, I'm supposed to be doing this I'm not doing this and I and I feel very frustrated I, I don't feel a sense of purpose yeah I, I know this person loves me cares for me etc and uh, you know we are living a good comfortable life but then I'm actually called to do this, and I'm doing something else. You know. So uh, that's uh, area of that can be an area of uh, incompatibility. Okay, so uh, one needs to talk about this and uh, find out or consider. You know, 
what is this person's even before making a commitment even before uh, you know courtship time and you know hey what is your life's calling you know what are you called to do and be honest about it and not say things that will please the other person okay well if there is no specific you know uh, call or you're saying that oh i'm still considering i'm still exploring i know i, I know i want to serve god but i don't in what way it what form you know in, i mean that season of life then then it's perfectly all right right but uh, this is another area to consider uh, as um, you know an area which 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 needs to be considered for compatibility okay so um what if there are uh, some red flags or some signs uh, where you see that okay these could be potential areas okay um so what are some areas to consider okay so we look at these four broad uh, classifications uh, or areas to consider for compatibility and you know some specifics if you want to look at you know uh, some things are is that person there are two, some questions to you know to really consider is the person mature immature is the person mature enough to handle responsibilities the responsibility of marriage okay so it could be a great person it could be a fun person right um, very lively etc but is that person mature to handle this right or is the person still childish and uh, immature to handle responsibilities or what does not want to uh, you know handle any kind of responsibility uh, and so on marriage family okay um second one is uh, you know is the person serious about preparing for marriage okay so nobody is like fully prepared fully you know equipped and perfect right so second thing to consider is is the person willing to prepare you know or is the person prepared like some of the things we looked at with regard to work financially uh, emotionally right uh, the problem areas to be worked at or working on okay um, so uh, is a person willing to give time right to do that so preparation or lack of it okay and another thing you know are there character weaknesses right um like temperamentally you know sometimes they say like especially in you know indian tamil culture you know it's like oh yeah, that person is is gold you know it's like fantastic um but he gets very angry you know he just gets angry and when he gets angry he just loses control he's just throw, throwing things and breaking things but he's a he's a god he's got a good heart hey that's a that's a red flag right there's a red flag right there uh, it's uh, and, and the bible talks about a man who cannot rule his his own his own self is like a city without walls where you just open up your life for any kind of attack any kind of invasion there's, there's no you know the person is going to be in some problem or the other because of this issue of anger and rage okay um so the thing is this you know are there any addictions are there any emotional issues right which is um, causing this uh, character weakness and uh, and is the person doing something about it aware of it doing something about it okay being aware itself is a is a first step right and the second step is to do something about it being willing to get help being willing to change right being teachable right so uh, so the, you know uh, so that's that's another area um i guess we'll stop here and then we'll continue with uh, you know some more red flags or some more things to uh, signs to uh, watch out for and to consider right okay so we'll take a 10 minutes break and then we'll come back